Let's proceed with an example. To create a cluster control, we start with the array, matrix, and cluster palette. We place down the cluster control, and again, when we put this on the front panel, very much like with the array shell, we have a broken VI. The reason is that the cluster contains no elements and is undefined. Very much like with the array, the cluster is not defined until we put some data inside it. So let's do so. Let's put down a numeric control, and we can put that right inside the cluster. We'll call that x0. Notice now that the cluster is satisfied and the VI is ready to run. But we can put together different types of data. We can put multiple numeric controls together. So we can place both of these controls inside the cluster. And the cluster is still valid and we can put multiple types of data together. We can even put arrays or other clusters inside of a cluster. So what I've done now is I've created a cluster which contains three pieces of data. A numeric called x0, a numeric called delta x, and an array of numerics called the y data array. This may look familiar. In fact, before we proceed, let's just place down a waveform graph. Recall that there are two ways to hook up a waveform graph. We can either simply put in an array of numbers, or we can put in a cluster which contains data about the x-axis as well as the y-axis. Let's take a look at the cluster. Even though the cluster that we've created contains three different pieces of data, in fact two scalars and an array, it's still just a single terminal. In fact, a single wire comes out of that terminal and can be used now to connect directly to our waveform graph. Let's turn our context help on and just hover over the wire. Notice how the context help tells us what type of data we have on this wire. It tells us that it is a cluster of three elements. It tells us that we have two numerics, an x0 and a delta x, and we have a y data array. Let's return to the front panel. The controls within the cluster behave just like normal controls. We can put values into them, and we can navigate and expand and otherwise rearrange controls just as if they were standard controls. What I'm going to do now is just put some data into our array and run the VI. Notice that as promised the x0 and the delta x are defining the scaling of the points on the x-axis. Our x0, our starting point, is 1.5 and our delta x, or spacing between points, is 0.1. And of course the y data array is giving us the values on the y-axis. There are a few other important points about clusters which we can quickly discuss here. If we right-click on the edge of the cluster, we'll find an important submenu on the context menu. This one is called Auto Sizing. Right now, and by default, Auto Sizing is set to None. Another option is to choose Size to Fit. Observe what happens on our front panel when we choose Size to Fit. The cluster has automatically been sized to perfectly fit the contents within it. In fact, if we move things around, the cluster will automatically expand and contract as necessary to best fit the contents. Another option from the auto sizing menu is to arrange horizontally or arrange vertically. Let's choose arrange vertically. What this has done is to automatically align the elements within the cluster on the left hand side and to set the vertical spacing to zero. If we were to now try and move one of these objects, notice how it will immediately snap back into place. And if we were to put a new object inside the cluster, that object would automatically be placed, again, aligned on the left-hand side and immediately beneath the furthest one. Another important function available from the cluster submenu is reorder controls in cluster. If we select that, then the front panel goes into a mode which allows us to define which element is in the cluster in what order. Notice how right now we see that x0 is element 0, delta x is element 1, and the y data array is element 2.
That's because they were originally created in that order. We can redefine the order by simply clicking on the objects in another order and observe that as we click, we're redefining which is the zeroth, first, and second elements. Once we've done that, notice that the auto arranging has rearranged the object so that the first element in the cluster is at the top and the last element is at the bottom. Also notice something important here. Our front panel is now broken. Our wire, even though it contains the proper types of data, is no longer accepted by the waveform graph. The reason for that is that although the data type is correct, the order is not. The waveform graph requires that the data be in the order of x0, delta x, and y. So we'll return the order of the clusters back to the way it was, x0, delta x, and y, and observe that the wire is now intact. So it's important to understand that not only is the type of data within the cluster important, also the order can be important. Next, let's briefly discuss cluster constants. Much like it was possible to create array constants, the same is true for clusters. From our functions palette, if we go to the cluster class and variant subpalette, there's an object called the cluster constant. Once that's placed on the block diagram, very much like the front panel version, we can place numeric, string, or any other type of data type inside that cluster to define our cluster constant. 